Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskratyam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Vyasam Vyasam Nasta Prayeshu Vapatreshu Nasta Prayeshu Bhagavati Tamashloke Bhagavati 
भगवती नष्ट की वर गोइंग टू रीड फ्रॉम द श्रीमद् भागवतम दिस इज कैंटो 4 चैप्टर नंबर 31 Chapter thirty-one is the last chapter in the fourth canto, entitled "Narada Muni Instructs the Prachetas." Text number thirty. Vedapis.com. श्रीमद भागवतम फोर्थ कैंटो चैप्टर थर्टी वन टेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी लास्ट बट वन टेक्स्ट थर्टी चैप्टर थर्टी वन टेक्स्ट थर्टी श्री सुखाचारिदुरो गज साम गजूरो गज साम स्वनम दृक्षु प्रायो स्वनम दृक्षु प्रायो जातिनम 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 या <laughs> श्रीकृतिया जातिनम निवृताशाया दूरो गज सावायम दृक्षु प्रायो जातिनम निवृताशाया श्रीशुक उवाच विजुरो गज साम 
Bhakti Drikshu Prayayo Bhakti Drikshu Prayayo Jatinam Nivritashaya Someone else like the chant? Anyone? Shri Shukha Vacha Shri Shukha Vacha she <laughs> Janatam Shri Sukha Vacha Shri Sukha Deva Swami said Shri Sukha Deva Swami Iti. Thus. Thus. Anan Ananya. Ananya. Offering obeisances. Offering obeisances. Come. Come. Unto Maitreya. Amantriya. Amantriya. Taking permission. Taking permission. Vidura. 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 Gaja Savayam. Gaja Savayam. The city of Hastinapura. Swanam, own, Didrikshu, desiring to see, Rayayo, left that place, Jatinam, of his kinsmen, Nevrita Asaya, Free from material desires. Translation. Sukadeva Goswami continued. Vidura thus offered obeisances unto the great sage Maitreya and taking his permission started for the city of Hastinapur to see his own kinsman although he had no material desires, purport. When a saintly person wants to see his kinsmen, he has no material desire to see them. He simply wants to give them some instructions so that they can benefit. Vidura belonged to the royal family of the Kuras, and although he knew that all the family members were dis destroyed at the battle of Kurukshetra, he nonetheless wanted to see his elder brother, 
Dhritarashtra to see if he could deliver Dhritarashtra from the clutches of Maya. When a saintly person like Vidura sees his relatives, he desires only to deliver them from the clutches of Maya. Vidura thus offered his respectful obeisances to his spiritual master and departed for the city of Hastinapur, the kingdom of the Kaurava. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Jnana Shabdhan Shaksur Milikanyena Asmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Manovisham Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Tadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Gara Shri Yata Parakamana Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Shri Rupam Sarajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sarvayatam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitam Sajam E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastade Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vrishwari Vrishabhanam Sri Devi Pranamangi Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Tarudyasya Kripa Sindhu Vaibhaja Namaha Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Vistaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Namade Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Prachayini Nirvishesha Sunyamani Vashyakya Deshtakani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu so we're reading from this chapter in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Narada Muni had been instructing the Prachetas, and it was all told about by Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami was telling to Maharaj Parikshit, and Maharaj Parikshit was hearing from him. With Maharaj Parikshit, he's preparing for his death. He has only seven days to live. So he is preparing to die. And he's preparing by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. So Sukadeva Goswami is telling him how Maitreya had met with Vidura. You see, because... Ma Maharaj Parikshit wanted to know about Vidura. He wanted to know how was it that Vidura uh, had come back to the palace to speak to Dhritarashtra. So Sukadeva Goswami was telling him how Vidura had met with Maitreya. Maitreya was a disciple of Parasharamuni. And Parasharamuni was the father of Vyasadev. And Vyasadev is the father of Sukadeva Goswami. So there's some relationships you can see there. Sukadeva Goswami was a liberated soul from his birth. He had left home 
above actually he had stayed in the womb of the mother for 16 years he did not like to come out he did not like to take birth and he remained in the womb of the mother for 16 years and it was only when lord krishna came and preached to him and told him that you can come out that i promise if you come out you won't be affected by maya you won't be disturbed by the material energy so when sukadeva goswami got this reassurance he took his birth he came out from the womb but he immediately left home he came out and he became immediately became grown you know didn't came out as a baby but immediately assumed the size of a 16 year old person because he'd been in the womb for 16 years so when he came out he immediately grew to his side and he left home he did not wait around and his father was a bit disturbed because you know father was thinking i'm going to have a son my son will be with me but the son immediately left home and he didn't, he did not even wait to take the sacred thread vyasadev of course was a, a learned sage he was a brahmana and he wanted to put the sacred thread onto his son but sukadeva goswami did not wait for the thread he thought i don't need the thread i don't need that he was already a liberated soul the, the Brahman thread is to help a person to become liberated. When people actually, the, the, when the, uh, the Lord Chaitanya, when he took sannyas, Lord Chaitanya, of course, took sannyas in the line of Sankaracharya, then they take off the Brahman thread. Although he was wearing the Brahman thread, but when he became a sannyasi, he took the Brahman thread off. So Sukadeva Goswami, he didn't even bother to get the Brahmana thread. He just simply left home. He had no interest to get a thread. A father was worried. He thought, oh, I want to, I want to give him the thread. I want to teach him Gayatri Mantra. But Sukadeva Goswami didn't need Gayatri Mantra. So Sukadeva Goswami left and Later on, of course, he heard Srimad Bhagavatam and he heard Srimad Bhagavatam and then he repeated the Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Parish. So within the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami was explaining how Vidura met with Maitreya. Maitreya, we said, was a, a disciple of Parasharamuni. He had heard from Parasharamuni. And Maitreya was also very fortunate. He had been in the area where Lord Krishna was instructing Uddhava. Uddhava was going to uh, ask questions to Krishna. And Lord Krishna was preparing to depart from the world. Lord Krishna came to this world and he remained for one about 125 years and then he was ready to leave the world and go back to his abode in the spiritual sky so before he departed from the world Uddhava had come and taken instruction and at that time Maitreya had heard all the instruction so Vidura wanted to get knowledge from Maitreya. Vidura is the brother of Dhritarashtra. You know Dhritarashtra from the Bhagavad Gita. He spoke the very first verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Right? The very first verse. He was inquiring about his sons. So Dhritarashtra was blind materially and also spiritually he was blind from birth he had been blind and he was blind spiritually also he could not see his fault 
he could not understand the identity of Lord Krishna and he was very, very attached to his own family. That is a big problem in material life. We become very attached to the family members. So it can be good if the family are good. If the family are also devotees, then it's, it's good. But if the family are not devotees, then it can be a problem. And Dhritarashtra's family were not devotees. He had 100 sons. And the oldest son was Duryodhan. And Duryodhan was not a devotee. He was not favorable to devotional service. So it was a problem for Dhritarashtra because he would always listen to his son. Anyway, his son, all of his sons, all the 100 sons were all killed in the battle of Kurukshetra. Vidura had left the home. He had gone away. He'd been sent away by Duryodhan. And Vidura had gone to visit the holy places and to get, get association. And he'd, got, he'd taken association from Maitreya. So Maitreya had taught him about the absolute truth. And after he had received all the teachings from Maitreya, then Vidura wants to go back home to Hastinapur. But Prabhupada describes he is going back not because of any material desire, not because he feels some affection, but because he wants to try to give some mercy to his unfortunate brother. The unfortunate brother is, of course, Dhritarashtra. So, Vidura is, he had he'd taken the knowledge from Maitreya and then he's saying farewell to his teacher and he's going to go to Hastinapur to see his brother, Dhritarashtra. Prabhupada points out, when the great souls go to see their family members, it is not any, it is not sentimental, but it's to give them spiritual benefit. Just like Prabhupada had a family, he had a wife and he had five children. His children were there in Calcutta. So Srila Prabhupada was going to go to America. And he was going to go on the ship. He was to get the ship in Calcutta. So he came to, he'd been living in Vrindavan. And then he came to Calcutta to get ready to go to America. Now Calcutta was his home. His family were there. But he did not go home. When he came to Calcutta, he did not go to see the family because he was already a sannyasi. He was already renounced from the material world. So he did not go to see any of the family. Of course, his son came to see him. That was Allah. The son came to see him. And the son saw his father go on the ship and he saw the ship go out across to go across the ocean to go to America. So one devotee, he asked Prabhupada's son, he said to him, he said, what were you thinking when you watched your father go on the ship and go off to America? Because Prabhupada was already 65, 70 years old at that point, not a young man. So his son was there watching him go off to America. So he said, what were you thinking about when you watched your father go? And he, his son said, oh, I was proud of my father. He said, I was proud. 
And that's very good, that the son was appreciating how the father was so brave, so bold, that he would go to America with no money. <laughs> you, would you like to go to America with no money? And you go to America, and you don't know anyone, and you're a foreigner, and you, you come there to America, very difficult. But he, Prabhupada, didn't like that. So the same way Vidura, Vidura was to go home, he's going back to Hastinapur to see the family, to see his brother. Now the brother had already rejected him. He'd been thrown out of Hastinapur. The Duryodhan, the son of Dhritarashtra, told him, get out before I beat you. So Dhritarashtra uh, did not interfere. He heard his son speak like that to Vidura. And Vidura thought, this is Krishna's mercy. Vid who is Vidura? You have to understand who is Vidura, right? Who is Vidura? Yes, but who is he in, before? Before he became Vidura. Vidura. Huh? No. Yeah, but what was his name? He was a pure devotee. He was Yamaraj. Yes, Yamaraj. Yamaraj comes as Vidura. Yamaraj was cursed to become a Sudra, to take birth in the womb of the Sudra woman. Yamaraj got cursed. And he came as Vidur. And as Vidur, he is born in the family. He is born from the seaman of Vyasadeva. Right? Vyasadeva was the father of Dhritarashtra and Pandu and Vidur. Three brothers, all from the seaman of Vyas. Different wives, different ladies. There were two sisters who were the queens, right? So one was the mother of Pandu and one was the mother of Dhritarashtra. So they, they wanted another son because they did not like these sons. They thought one son is blind and the other son is very pale. So they thought you should have a good son to be the king. But the, both the ladies said, no, we don't want to go again with that man. <laughs> you have to have a child by that man again. They refused. So they got the maidservant to go. They sent the maidservant that you go and give, have, a, give a, have a child by the time. So Vyasa gave produced the child in the womb of the maidservant. So this was Vidura. And this was Yamaraj. Yamaraj is coming as Vidura. <laughs> and Yamaraj is one of the Mahajans. He's one of the 12 Mahajans. They are authorities in devotional service. So even though you're a Mahajan, you may be cursed sometimes to become also, to, to work in the womb of the Sutra woman. Swayambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Komar, Kapilo, Manu, Pralado, Janako, Bhishma, Balir, Vyasaki, Vayam. Vayam means Yamaraj. These 12 names are spoken by Yamaraj. Yamaraj was telling his servants, the Yamaduts. The Yamaduts, they are all servants of Yamaraj. So they were asking Yamaraj, Beside you, is there anybody else who is who knows about the devotional about the absolute truth? They asked Yamaraj, and Yamaraj said, "Oh, there, there are. These, we're all authorities." And he named Lord Brahma, Swayambhu Brahma, Narada, Shambhu, 
Lord Shiva, Prahlad Maharaj, Janaka Maharaj, Bhishma, Bali, Vayasaki, means Sukadeva Goswami, and Yamaraj. They are the authorities in Bhakti Yoga. And of course, above all of them is the Supreme Lord. Above the Mahajans, there is the Supreme Lord. There, these authorities are all teaching us that there's one Supreme above everyone. And who is that Supreme Lord? Well, that is Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. Lord Vishnu is the Parusha avatar and the incarnations come from him. But Lord Vishnu himself, he is coming from the original Swayam Bhagavan, Sri Krishna. From Lord Krishna comes Sankarshan. Well, first of all comes Balaram. And then from Balaram comes Sankarshan. And then from Sankarshan, the Chaturvyuha, meaning Sankarshan, Aniruddha, Prajumna, Vasudev, like that, this is the Chaturvyuha. And then from Vasudev comes the Purusha avatars. You have Mahavishnu, Garbo Dakeshai Vishnu, Shiro Dakeshai Vishnu. So sometimes people become confused about who is the Supreme. Is Krishna the Supreme or is Vishnu? When I was a new devotee, I looked in the dictionary. I looked up Krishna, the word Krishna in the English dictionary. And it said Krishna, eighth avatar of Vishnu. <laughs> That is, that is true, that there's a, there is a Krishna who is the eighth avatar of Vishnu. But there's another Krishna who is the supreme, who is the original Swayam Bhagavan Krishna. Above all of them, above all the avatars, above all the Vishnu forms is the Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. So there, there are different Krishnas. We have to understand the Lord comes at different times. But there's one supreme personality over everyone. And that is Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. And we can understand that from the information of the scriptures. And the Bhagavad Gita also says in the Bhagavad Gita after Krishna shows or, or, or even before Krishna shows the universe, in chapter 10 in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita, the four verses, the Chatur Sloki of the Bhagavad Gita, the, the essence of the Bhagavad Gita. And then Arjuna said, I accept you as the absolute truth. And Arjuna said, not only do I accept you, but also Asita, and Devala, and Vyas, and Narad, they all accept you as the Supreme. Now I also accept you, Arjuna. So there's no shortage of evidence to understand who is the Supreme. Lord Krishna is the Supreme. And he comes. He comes, and sometimes he will come himself, sometimes he will send his representatives, just like Vidura is finding out about Krishna by hearing from great authorities, by hearing from Maitreya. Maitreya is telling him everything. And now Vidura wants to go back to his home to see his brother because his brother is going to die soon. And Vidura wants to give him mercy before he dies, he wants to deliver him. So Vidura is going to go back, but he will not teach him about bhakti yoga. He will just simply try to get him detached from the material situation. Because Dhritarashtra was an offender of devotee. The one who is the... Hare Krishna. See you again. Eh? Going? Yeah, she has to go. Oh, okay. 
Prasad? Going good, Prasad. Yes. Yes. Please continue. Okay. So, Dhritarashtra was an offender of the devotees. He committed Vaishnava Aparad, and because of his offenses, he was not able to take up devotional service. He was not able to do bhakti yoga because he did so many bad things. He he encouraged his sons to fight. Lord Krishna tried to stop the battle of Kurukshetra. Lord Krishna wanted peace. But Dhritarashtra said no. Duryodhana said no. And Dhritarashtra supported Duryodhana. No, we have to have war. So like that, Dhritarashtra was an offender of the devotees. So he cannot do bhakti yoga. So sometimes we see people like that. They're not able to chant Hare Krishna. They're not able to be devotee. They want, they're looking for the truth, but they've committed too many offenses to be able to take up the spiritual path. So then they take some other path, like Dhritarashtra. He got impersonal liberation. He could not get real devotion, but he could get impersonal liberation. <clears throat> so that was good for Dhritarashtra because he was a materialist. He was very materially attached. And it was only by the mercy of Vidura he could be saved. So that was the kindness of a devotee. That Vidura went home and he got Dhritarashtra to go out from the house and they went to the forest and they did tapasya. And Dhritarashtra gave up his body in the forest. And Gandhari, when, when Dhritarashtra's body was burning in the forest, his wife entered into the fire and she also gave up her body. Right? She committed sati. Right? So she was a very chaste wife. She followed her husband. Her husband was blind. Gandhari made herself also blind. Covered her eye. She didn't want to be better than her husband. When she was a young woman, she was told that she would marry a man who is blind. So she thought, well, if I have to marry a man who is blind, I will cover my eye. And she put cloth over her. Gandhari is a huge devotee of Lord Shiva. Gandhari, yes? Gandhari, well, she was not a devotee of Lord Krishna. Lord Shiva. Anyway, I'm talking about her chastity, that she was a chaste wife. Whoever she was a devotee of, she certainly was not a, a follower of Lord Krishna, but she understood something about Lord Krishna. But she was also very attached yeah. to the family, to her children. She was very angry at Bhima because Bhima had killed all of her sons. Mm -hmm. So she had a lot of anger towards him. Anyway, after the battle of Kurukshetra, she was living there with her husband and they were living in the home of the Pandavas and they were having to eat the food from the Pandavas. So then they left because Vidura came and Vidura talked to them and told them that you have to prepare for the next life. We have to, the, the Vedas say, we have to prepare for the next life. There are ashrams, right? There's the Brahmachari, Brahmacharini, then Grihastha, and then Vanaprastha, and then like that. There's after family life, then there is retired life. 
we don't remain. We should not remain in the family life. We have to go into the detached life. The Vedas say, Pancha Sorvam Banam Brajet. From the age of 50, we should go to live in the forest. All right? And live in the forest means take up spiritual life. Just like this woman living in the forest. Right? <laughs> Preparing for the next life. Living in the forest. I live in mountains. <laughs> so, why, why we should go to the mountains? Why we should go to the forest? To get away from, material, from sense gratification. Yeah. And to concentrate on spiritual life. To chant the holy name. To read the Shastra. And constantly absorb our mind and thought of the Supreme Lord. That is the real purpose of human life. We should not waste our life just trying to become rich, trying to make money in the material world. We have to think about the future, the next life. Where are we going from here? When we leave this body, at any time we can die, we can leave the body any time. So Sukadeva Goswami is helping Maharaj Parikshit. Maharaj Parikshit had only seven days to prepare. But it was enough time. Seven days. He, he fully he prepared himself very nicely. And after seven days he was ready and he could give up the body. There was another king, there was a king called Katvanga Maharaj. <laughs> Katvanga Maharaj was a king. He was, he, he was taken by the demigods to heaven to fight for the demigods against the demons. And then after some time, then Kartikeya came. Kartikeya was the son of Lord Shiva. So Kartikeya came and then the demigods told this king Katvanga, they said, Oh, we don't need you anymore now. You can go back. They said, thank you very much for helping us. And we'll, we'll give you a blessing. You may ask any blessing you want. So he said, just tell me, how much time do I have left in this world? Would you like to know how much time you have left in the world? Huh? You wouldn't like to know. <laughs> yeah, you have to know, right? Well, yes, yes, sir. Then well, we can prepare accordingly. They they told this king, "You have only a moment's time left." <laughs> oh. So they told me, "You have only a moment." So immediately he came back from heaven. He came to earth, and immediately he sat and fixed his mind on the lotus feet of the Lord, and then he gave up his body. And went back to Godhead. He got success. He only had a moment. But he could do it. He was not attached. He gave up everything. And he concentrated his mind. Went back to God. So some people have seven days. Some people have longer. We don't know. We don't know how long we have to live in this world. But we know one day we have to leave the world. We have to prepare. We have to prepare to leave the world. And how to prepare? We should hear scriptures. We should hear from the Srimad Bhagavatam. We should chant the holy name. And we should worship the Lord. And we should get free from all of our attachments. And even we saw devotees, like there were devotees leaving the body. They would, if they had offend, if we had offended anyone, we will ask forgiveness. That if I've offended you in any way, please forgive me, because we don't want any bad feeling. You know, after you leave the body, 
somebody they see, oh, that person, you know, they see, had a, had, had a bad relationship with them. So you don't want any bitterness. You don't want any grudges or bad feelings there. Otherwise, that will bring, bring you back to the material world. So Prabhupada did like that. When Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, he knew he was leaving the body. So he, when the God brothers came, his God brothers came, and so he said to them, if I have offended any of you in any way, please forgive me. He got forgiven. He asked them, please forgive me if I've offended any of you. So we should do like that. We shouldn't have any bitter feelings to anyone. We want to have an empty, be clean in our heart when we leave the body. And then you can get a better destination in the future. Hmm? We want to go on. We, we don't want to go down. We want to go up. And we'd like to go all the way up, back to Godhead, up to the topmost position, beyond the universe. Not just in the universe, but beyond the universe, into the spiritual world, into the planets of the Supreme Lord, and live there with the Supreme Lord, engage in his service. So Vidura came home to help Dhritarashtra to get him out of his material condition. It's very difficult to get people out of the home. <laughs> Prabhupada said, 5,000 years ago, there was only one Dhritarashtra. But he said, today, there's a Dhritarashtra in every home. In every home, we'll find Dhritarashtras. They're very attached. They want to be comfortable. They'll just sit and watch television all the time, pass their time in this way, waste their life. They don't realize the value of the human life. Television and the games have become a big distraction. Television. Uh, television games. games. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Mobile games, yes. Yes. So, uh, you mentioned that, uh, that we ask for forgiveness uh, when we come uh, just to prepare us and to clean our heart. Um, what if we come into devotion, so, like we're doing this devotion, trying to become a devotee, but um, there are certain things that we have done in life before, which or hurt somebody or something, but it's not possible to ask for forgiveness from those people because maybe you can't meet them or they're not there anymore. Um, so then, like, would that still be counted in and we have to come back, even if we have done our devotion? Well, if within our heart we, we genuinely feel sorry that we've offended people like that, we can get with that mood of repentance if it's in our mind in the heart the feeling that you know i did wrong i i should i've offended someone then that will help that's very good yeah that will help to free us from the 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 reactions just to have that mood that i i did not do right i should have done better There was one devotee here in Switzerland. He was a disciple of Lokana Swami. So what happened was he got cancer and he was, it was throat cancer, you know, so he decided he would just fast to death because he could not speak properly and he was spitting up blood and couldn't do any service. So he thought, there's no point. I might as well just fast and leave the body. So he came home and his mother was there and everything. So he was telling his mother, I'm sorry, I wasn't a good son. I didn't serve you very well. Like that. You know, he was saying like that before he left the body. Was, his sister told me 
I met her recently. She told me how he was saying before he left the body, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't do very well as, a, as your son. I didn't serve you very nicely. Please forgive me. Like that. And a few days later, he left the body. So, was not he got he could ask for forgiveness from the family because he'd been a devotee he'd been like a brahmachari sannyasi almost right just away from home not helping much with them not helping the mother so he apologized to her so that's nice then clean the heart so that it's easier for your progress. Okay, any other question? Yes? Uh, just for me, the uh, yeah, first question, uh, Raji, what if there has been an altercation is a very strong word, but some disagreement and you don't like somebody's behavior, and at one point even you said something with a loud tone. Now people have gone away, away as in, in different countries of heaven, you're feeling bad because it stayed with you, but maybe if you had kept quiet at that moment and you kept, then it would have just the situation would have passed, even if it wasn't with you. And now you're feeling bad, 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 and you don't want to keep this before you go, whenever you go. So if you think that it's still not your fault, but you're still feeling bad because somehow your voice was raised, how do you take care of that? And you can't, what if you don't talk to them, but you say, okay, I'm really sorry, please, uh, different parts in your head, is it okay? Well, how do you know? Well, you know, if it happens, we have to understand must be we must be involved in some way. We can't say it wasn't my fault. We must have some involvement, maybe something maybe like maybe we offended them in the past. And that's why it was happening. Like yeah. Oh. It could be like that. Uh, so we should think like that, that I must have done something to deserve this somewhere in the past. So... You can ask forgiveness in your heart. Yes. Yes. In so, your heart. Ask forgiveness. Well, uh, also uh, in Vidura, uh, so Yamaraj, uh, Vidura was conscious, he knew that he is young. Yamaraj? Yeah. Like, or was it just like us normal? <laughs> <laughs> Curious. Well, I, I, probably he knew. Yeah. Otherwise, how, how do we know? Yeah. <laughs> how do we know? How do we know? How is it told? It's told there. So, what difference does it make, you know? In the past, We've all had different positions. In the past, we've been, you know, maybe a Brahma, we've been demigods, you know, we've all been in these different positions. We've been through many different bodies, different species of life. So does it make any difference, you know, who we were in our past? Don't you know who I am? You know, in my previous life, I, you know. But who are you now? You know, what's our position now? It's not who you were in the past, but yeah. it's what we are now. So it doesn't make any difference. But probably he knew. Just like Bharat Maharaj, Jad Bharat, all right, Jad Bharat. Mm. He was he be, he was Bharat Maharaj. And then he became a deer. Yes. And then he became Jampara. So he knew. He knew he'd been a deer. And he knew be before that he was Bharat Maharaj. Uh, Say I had a dream before I was Jampa and then uh, to the dream and vision of uh, some reporter friend. Was in this dream, we had uh, some conversation. Doctor, he told me, Can you ask today on the lecture question why we have sometimes uh, problems with Lakshmi? 
and uh, I saw the uh, okay, what is that? And after after during the day, I understood that it's true. Well, Lakshmi is one of the things which we are attached to in material life. All right, we're attached to wealth, we're attached to education, we're attached to good looks, we're attached to being in a good family. These are material things. So the more we're in the bodily conception of life, the more we're attached to these things. The more we're attached to... It's not, it's, it's not really true. It's actually something in our mind. That within our mind, we think we have a problem with money. Actually, there's no real problem, but the problem is in our mind. People have trouble with their mind. They, because they are so attached. They think, my money is not enough. I don't have enough. They have enough money, but they're thinking it's not enough. They're always thinking, I don't have enough. Even though they have enough. They have enough to live. But they're thinking, oh no, I need more, I need more. And so it's the uncontrolled mind which is the real problem. It's not the money which is the problem. It's the same money, but the problem is the mind, how you think of it. We're thinking the money is for my enjoyment, for my sense gratification. So that creates a problem. The body, the things we're attached to. The money is one of these things. We have to become detached. That is why when people renounce the world, they will also renounce wealth. And they will take a vow of poverty to be poverty to be poverty stricken. It's one of the vows. Just like if you become a, uh, a monk, even in Christianity, if you become a nun or a monk, they make a vow of poverty, not to possess anything. A Buddhist monk, a vow of poverty, just begging every day. And similarly also, the sannyasis, renouncements, they have nothing is their own. <laughs> Prabhupada says sannyas means walking dead man. <laughs> dead man means no material responsibility does not possess anything. Why? Because Krishna is all Krishna's. He's a proprietor. It all belongs to God. It's not mine. We have nothing. We came to the world with nothing and we leave with nothing. But we are claiming this is mine. This is mine. So we have to give up that sense of being the proprietor. Don't think of ourselves as the proprietor. Rather think of ourselves as the servant. Not the, the proprietor means the master. But we're not the master. Our position is to be the servant. Birth after birth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is better, being smart or being kind? Being smart or, or being, being kind? Well, if somebody is smart, then they'll be kind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I found sometimes it's very uh, controversial. Or uh, she yeah. maybe she is thinking if you are kind, sometimes people take advantage of you, you and then smart. it's not good for us. Well, you maybe have that's... to know how to be kind. Yes. You have to know what it means to be kind. You know, to be kind is to actually help people spiritually. That is real kindness. To help people, to elevate people from the bodily platform and to bring them to the spiritual platform. That is real kindness. To help people get out of ignorance. Kindness is not to just give some charity to some poor person and they'll take your money and go and buy some drugs or alcohol. That is not kind. 
Real kindness is to give people knowledge, wisdom, which can help them to come out of ignorance. But if someone is coming and asking for a help, you then... have to know how to help them. Ah. So you don't, you, you, you can give them, if we're going to give them food, we will give them prasadam. Mm -hmm. right? We're not going to give them something which is not offered. We will give, we don't mind to give food, but it must be prasad. We distribute. We distribute prasad of the people. That is being kind to people. And we give people the holy name. That is also kindness. To give the maha mantra, to chant the holy name to them. That is really being, that is real kindness. She brought some of her friends to our satsang. Oh, so that's kind. <laughs> yes. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, we will chant one round of Hare Krishna. Okay.